Welcome everyone to this. We are so honored to have Myra G from Hale Pule on our podcast today and so grateful for your presence. Thank you for being here. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, nice to be here, especially on this special day. Yeah. Such a special day. And something that we love to ask everyone who comes into our podcast is when was the first time you felt something on a soul level? Hmm. Well, uh, I, I, I would say that was when I was three. Uh, and I think it was really the first time I became very aware of the stars. <laughs> and, uh, and it was a, it was a time where, you know, there'd been some change in my living and my family and, uh, you know, things had gotten better, actually, it seemed a little bit easier. And yet, uh, you know, with more around us, more, more around me physically, but it was the first time I actually, it was the only time actually in my life, we had a very brief period where I had my own room too. And I remember just coming back in from seeing the stars and being aware of it. And, uh, and, just, uh, and just being able to sit with that. Yeah. And uh, mm, I, have a, it's, I have a recollection of it, particularly because, uh, you know, as time went on in life, you know, the imagination sort of goes gets distorted and goes away in many ways. And so I, I, it, it's, it's, a, it's a nice memory for me. And it really uh, helped me see that, you know, there was, there was more to me than what it, what it seemed. And yet it was everything. So. <laughs> hmm. I love hearing that. That is a simple practice that I resonates with me now. And even I can recall back as a child, you just look up and seeing shooting stars. It's just so magical and I'm missing at the same time. I'm curious, did you have a recent, more of a recent discovery of being under the stars that led you more into studying maybe Vedic astrology and the science of light because of that? <laughs> um, yes and no, I suppose. Uh, you know, there was a point uh, that was, uh, Oh, a couple of years into my Ayurveda exposure uh, that I was exposed uh, to Vedic astrology and, and really enjoyed it. And then and had a moment where I just felt like this is everything. I need to do this. Yeah. And uh, and at that point in my life, you know, I made a choice that it wouldn't become a primary thing for me, but only because of my age already and and what Ayurveda and yoga were already giving me. So uh, I, I felt like I would rely on others for that. But I do, you know, I dabble and I, I try to keep, learn something new with it every time I'm with somebody. But, uh, but just recognizing the importance of it and, um, oh, I don't know. I think I just, I just learned something else the other day, you know, that, that in the music, that each of the notes is related to, to, uh, to, to the planets and that, which was something I didn't, wow. it makes sense but I didn't realize it. Yeah. So this, so I just, I let the, the, the astrologers share those things with me and I, uh, I grab onto the things that, that are, are helpful and also to help me personally, just to, to, to have a greater sense of, uh, our, not only our connection, but the holistic nature of life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and speaking of that and your varied interests, one of the things we were super excited to talk to you about today is you've done so many things in your life. And I think a lot of people, especially at this point in time, are looking for like their thing, right? Their purpose, their dharma, their one thing. And we, we've talked to a lot of people in our community who feel off if they don't have that. And I love hearing about your background as a pianist and auto mechanic and an accountant and a farmer. And I think, you know, so many more things. So I just love to hear from you. Like, how is there so much value and wisdom and lessons in all of those experiences? You know, there really is. I think that <laughs> there's that, that saying that I, that many people have said to me many times, which is you're right where you're meant to be. And uh, you know, if I look back at the, the various things and why I made the choices I made, at the time, I didn't just didn't understand the full picture, yeah? you know, except there was something that was very clear to me uh, all, uh, each step of the way, which helped me to make the next change. And that was that 
that there was it wasn't it was didn't feel complete inside for me and in other words what i was doing it's like oh okay well i made some decisions i i <laughs> I, I made the first decisions probably because I grew up in science and, and, and my father was a scientist and I grew up in a community of scientists. And so that was the direction I went and I thought I would go into medicine. I got exposure and I said, oh my, I, there's something wrong here. I didn't know what it was. I mean, this was when this was, I was working in a hospital and going to school and I was 18 years old and I just said, there's something wrong here. <laughs> and I continued, you know, and, and part of it, probably a lot of things some along the way were to prove something to myself but then you know but then I then I got I it 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 was scary it was scary you know when I said no I'm not going into medicine no and then I went into I went into a PhD program uh, in genetics which was brand new at that time and uh had a big grant and all this and <laughs> after the first the first quarter of that I just said oh my this is not it I'm not spending my life in a laboratory and so to to make that shift was huge I mean I was really lost for a few months and I'd always been the type that you know I know exactly what I'm going to do and uh and so what I really recognize is how things have to get messy to make the changes you know sometimes it's a little mess sometimes it's a big mess but when we try to keep our, our life in a box and in straight lines, oh, this really doesn't work. You know, we're wiggly creatures. We need to, we, we, we do what we ever need to do, you know, and we each, and the thing I can say about all of my journey, if I go into it, it takes too long. <laughs> but what I can say is that I use now every single thing that I learned along the way. Each of the things that I've done along my path are, are things that I use today. I, I mean, I, I, I learned something, you know, when I became involved with the mechanics of cars and, and that, that it helped me to be able to understand physics and the mechanics of the body as well. Uh, and, and, you know, when I was in, uh, when I was in university, I, I worked in hospitals and I, I became what was called a deaner back then. And I, I cut surgical specimens. And uh, I did all the heavy work for the autopsies, which was another thing, you know, then as I went on later in my life, it made an incredible difference. So, you know, sometimes uh, we, th we, we, we think that we need, we're okay, well, I'm doing what my parents wanted me to do, and then I need to get away from that. But, you know, sometimes there's just this evolution that needs to take place. And that evolution is oh so important. And, and, you know, I speak of it now, but I was incredibly impatient with it you know, in, in the process, no doubt. Uh, but, but when I went into something, I went into it wholeheartedly. Uh, and then if I wasn't going to be in it wholeheartedly, then it was time for a change. And I think that's a really important thing to recognize, you know, that uh, don't torture yourself thinking you should do something for some particular reason because, you're, because your degree was in that or whatever that, that um, really having a sense of ourselves is, is when we're really to, ready to muster up some courage and, and take a step and see what happens. You know, we don't know. And, uh, and so, you know, these past couple of years have been a great opportunity for all of us to, to recognize that, you know, that we've been in that avija, that, that illusion that, oh yes, it's just gonna be like this all the time. Yeah, so, so, so the change is great. And, uh, but I do think that some longevity with things is really important. So once I came to 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 yoga and Ayurveda, then I it, there was it was very clear. Yeah, and even that has changed some now from the way it started. And uh, but but it's 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 something that uh, uh, I think that the most important thing about what we choose to do in life, our activity. Uh, you know, because people say, oh, what is my dharma? Well, I, I feel like our dharma is really to come and live life. Find the ways that have you step into living. 
And, and uh, when you do that, then, then you really, um, you can feel fulfilled with the very simplest things. Yeah. And so uh, that, that we don't have to, we don't have to have all the answers. Yeah. Yeah. So. I love that. And you kind of answered my next question, which was kind of a peek behind what was happening and on your heart during those times. So you mentioned you were impatient, but how did you come to that place? Like, was there that little sense of dissatisfaction that kept you seeking or were you feeling really grateful and immersed in each experience? And then there was something in you intuitively that you're like, okay, now it's time to move on. Or like, how did you find yourself to a place where you're like, ah, this puzzle piece now fits in my life? Oh yes. No, I was, I was, I was impatient and dissatisfied and, you know, but, but again, I, I had just, hmm, perhaps I was, I was raised in a way that just, you know, that whatever you're doing, you have to do it fully, you mm -hmm. know, that, that it's, hmm, that it was, that it's, it's an extremely important thing because, uh, because you need to be considerate of those around you. So if you have a job to do and you're there, then it has, a, it, it's a role in what everybody else is doing. And, and so that's something that I can't say a hundred percent, but that's something that I had some sense of. And uh, I had a mother who really uh, instilled that in me. And, the, the, and so, so the process I would say uh, was that I did have to get in a certain amount of pain. You know? That, you know, in other words, that dissatisfaction, um, and, and learning that I didn't have to feel like a victim and I didn't have to remain a victim. You know, I just didn't have to stay in that kind of a role. Uh, and, and so mm, I do remember a time, uh, and one in particular, but there were probably been a few where I felt very confused. You know, I felt like I was being pushed in certain directions, but it really wasn't where I wanted to go. And you know, those times where, as I look back at it, is I, did, I just didn't have the full picture yet. And I really just needed to let myself cry, go through that process and, uh, and then see, and just go do what was next, do what was right in front of me and, uh, and just get myself pointed in the direction I wanted to go. And that's, that's, that's what I, I think that's the part that I persisted with and uh, that felt like what was coming from deep inside of me, you know, that, that it was going to take me where I wanted to go, even though <laughs> each step of the way really didn't feel like it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that when people say, oh, you know, I want to know my purpose. I want to know my dharma. Well, we need to live life for one thing. You now we need to, you know, if we're, if, if we have children, then our dharma is to be a parent, you know, that's it. And uh, is there, are there other activities? Of course, but, uh, but does it, but that's such a, it's such an incredibly large and valuable thing in life. It is really the, the greatest opportunity for our expansion in life and for our evolution. So, um, but, but that, that everything we do can really become uh, it, it can be a part of our dharma, right? Because it's really, it, it has so much to do with the intention and attitude that I have. You know, what am I doing with my energy? And that's, it, it, you know, that's an interesting thing these days when there's uh, lots of people who have different, different views on things and that and our, our ability to be accepting in life. Uh, it's, it starts with our ability to accept ourselves and where we are and yes, I'm moving forward. Yeah. It's beautiful to hear your story as you reflect now and you see you're out of the illusionment and now you're into the light and you could see so clearly how you're always living your dharma and by flexing your trust muscle of trusting what your body was telling you to do in that moment I think is so huge because when we go for outsourcing our power of what we think we should do based on the rules then that's when we feel disconnected but something inside you was saying to go in all those directions. And now you see later reflecting back, now that you have light shed on that, there was a reason behind all of that. And I know that's a huge realization that happens when you start to immerse yourself in Vedic wisdom. And I'm curious, because there is a portion of our audience that may be newer to Ayurveda and coming into this world. What was some of the initial transformations that you experienced on your Ayurvedic path? Now knowing that, you know, the trust and intuition piece maybe was something that came after but what happened initially? 
initially, uh, initially I had some, some significant physical relief, you know, so that, that, that was that, whoa, I could just do that. And that happened, you know, <laughs> and I, I can't tell you how many years I had been, well, over 20 years, I had been trying to do things to feel better. You know, to, to, to not have some of those nagging problems that I had. And so that's, that was probably uh, one of the biggest things. You know, it was I, I, I finally, somebody said, you really need to have the ghee. And I was in India. And at that time, they would come around and put ghee on everybody's food, at, you know, after they served it to you. And, they, and, uh, and I just never eaten butter. And I just did, I really didn't know what the benefits of ghee were or any of that kind of thing. And I started using ghee, and then in a week's time, it made a big difference in how I felt. So, but I, and I was pretty dried up and <laughs> at that point. So it was, I think mean, it was pretty easy for it to have an impact. Uh, you know, but that, and that's probably, mm, what else? In Ayurveda, uh, just being able to understand how to balance the food that I was eating, you know, because I would have this tendency to eat a whole bunch of one thing, you know, asparagus season would come and I would have asparagus for at least two meals a day for a month and, uh, you know, crazy things like that. And, uh, and, you know, back then I wouldn't talk about following your intuition or anything like that. It just wasn't in the, not in my consciousness and this, and, uh, but, uh, but when Ayurveda introduced me to balancing the food and balancing the elements and what I was consuming, it's like, oh my goodness, this just makes so much sense. I mean, it just, it's like, it's like all the little pieces fell into place. Oh, life, right. Okay. <laughs> and, so, and so, yeah, that, that, that made a huge, huge difference in my ability to digest food and, and that. So I think those are some of the big things and just, just just that feeling too of, of, ah, yeah, I really am part of nature. You know, I'm not just this creature that got put here <laughs> and, and I'm supposed to defend myself from all of it. So, uh, and I've always, I've always really liked to, uh, I always wanted to live outside. And so I would be outside when I was young all as much as possible, but I lived in, I grew up in East Tennessee where there was um, winter and, uh, and I, which I didn't like. So uh, as, you know, as, as time went on, I, I moved myself toward the tropics and, and that agrees with me much better. So, but, it, and, and, and it's mainly because it's not so much that I like, like a lot of heat, it's that I can be outside. And uh, right now the, the doors are open, the windows are open and that's, and I sleep like that. And, and uh, actually the house is open. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, and as, there's also, and just in thinking about, you know, connecting to myself and connecting to my soul, feeling safe enough in life yeah, to, to just to be outside, you know, sometimes, sometimes there's lizards around, big ones <laughs> right there. And, and, you know, sometimes a wild cat comes in and, you know, there's, it, it's, it's like being a part of things. Yeah. yeah. So I think the more we can do that in life, it just it's in little ways, you know, just even just walking in the grass when you can and things like that makes a big difference. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you. I moved from Chicago to LA, so it was weather and it's also just feeling more connected to nature. So I definitely agree with you mm. on that front. And I find that it's fascinating that so many Ayurvedic healers come into this space of feeling that physical. And sometimes it shows up as suffering and pain in order for us to experience, again, the opposite of that and feeling whole and totally fulfilled in our mind-body connection. And I'm curious when, how did it show up in your body when you started to hear the call to build your own Ayurvedic school? Like, what were those messages? And what was some of that maybe pain or suffering you had to experience in order to experience the fulfillment of your Ayurvedic school. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'd like to share some big dramatic story, but it really wasn't. You know, honestly, what happened was that I, I got an email one day 
I, I'd been doing consultations and, and uh, been around some really incredible teachers and that kind of thing. But uh, I got an email one day that I thought was spam, and, uh, but I decided to respond to it. And it was an email from a Japanese company. And so they asked me to, we said, well, we really want you to train, train yoga teachers for us. And, and I said, well, okay, here's how I do it. And at that time I had gone, I was doing it over three months. And so they, they said, uh, well, they said, no, we want you to do it in a month. And anyway, so we went back and forth and I decided to go ahead and do it, even though I was really against that, but I could see that that was what was happening. You know, when I started teaching, I was just teaching one-on-one -on -one. and, uh, and I still only remained with small groups, uh, 20 or less. And so anyway, I started working with this Japanese company and, and, uh, and they are the ones that came to me and they said, they said, you know, we really want you to make a program. Uh, and, and, and so for Ayurveda, this was, Ayurveda was brand new for them. They had no idea and I had been introducing it and people were starting to get interested. And so they actually were the ones who stimulated it in me. And, uh, and then I started looking around in the United States and I said, okay, finally people are getting interested because, you know, it's for years, you know, the, at least the first 10 years, uh, it was pretty much you know, I hear what, you know, and so, and people weren't interested. So uh, anyway, yeah, so that's, that's what came about. And then actually it became really clear because I remembered something from childhood that, oh, you know, that I really, I really, I wanted to be a teacher and, 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 and I wanted to share things with people. But at that time, being a teacher was considered a very, um, a very inferior profession. Yeah. And so, uh, so I wasn't going to go there initially, even though I started teaching when I was 14. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, it just, it just evolved that way then. And from there I said, oh, okay, people are interested, let's do it. And so, you know, I coordinated initially with uh, uh, NAMA, the National Ayurvedic Medical Association and their standards and um, which was a, a dynamic and changing thing. Yeah. But uh, having an, I, having a school now makes sense to me because one of the things that was came in my life really early was that mm, people kept telling me that, and astrologers kept telling me, you need to, you need to share this in a bigger way. You need to share this in a bigger way. And I did not want to. Yeah, so that was me, you know, hanging on to my old ways. And, and, uh, and so gradually over time, I've let go of that. And, and, uh, and, and really, I'm enjoying it so much you know, now. And, uh, not, and I prefer to work in person, but, but uh, you know, having the opportunity to work online is also a great, it's a great privilege because uh, so many people are being um, exposed to Ayurveda and, and in a way that, that you know would have taken many 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 years otherwise so uh, yeah so that's that's the um, that's how it came about and having having it now I can see you know the the various levels that people can work at in in Ayurveda and the different uh, different um, paths that they can take with it it's just tremendous to see yeah it's really great yeah, that's one of our favorite things too. And we're actually going back to um, California College of Ayurveda in a few weeks to talk to some of the students because that's where we went to school and um, talking about all the different ways that you can blend Ayurveda with your unique gifts. And it's so fun, especially like you said, with so many people coming online to see what everyone's doing and how they're using their special gifts, which is amazing. And mm -hmm. I'm interested during your journey, if the most challenging part for you was really just trying to talk to people about something that they had no idea even existed or like what were some of the biggest challenges along your way of starting to spread Ayurveda um, on a grander scale? Mm -hmm. Actually, this is, this is where it really got fun for me. And that is trying sorting out different words to use, different ways of saying something so that people could understand it. And so what I did was that I did a lot of workshops early on uh, in environments and, and, I would either, I might say Ayurveda once and then I wouldn't, I didn't use it at all. And, you know, I, I remember at first I really struggled with it a little bit because it's like, well, I want to use the Sanskrit and all that. 
And, you know, I, I was just, I, I realized that in order to reach a lot of people that we needed to be able to, to speak it in English. And so, uh, and so I've done a lot of that. And that was very helpful for me. It was actually helpful for me in my learning and understanding uh, in a more, in more deeply to, to be able to, uh, how can I say this in a way uh, that, uh, for example, a room full of physicians and and uh, medical support people, or how can I how can I say this uh, in a uh, Japanese American community in in Hawaii, uh, mostly mostly seniors who and and they would tell me the reason they wanted to to be there was so that they could teach things to their grandchildren to be healthy. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, so it, 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 it's fun to, to be able to adapt it because it's life. We can adapt it to anything, any situation and uh, find it to be helpful for people. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. So you've, you've talked to so many different groups and I think that's so fun that you've kind of been able to put it into your own worlds and connect to people with where they're at. What is one of your favorite experiences of doing that? Was there a group of people or a location or anything like that that sticks out? Yes, actually, there is one. <laughs> I actually, uh, uh, a woman that I went to, to, to grade school and high school with, uh, she contacted me and I hadn't been in contact with her for many years. And she contacted me, she was ill. She'd heard about Ayurveda. And so, uh, and that and she invited me then to come back to the town where I grew up. And she said, I'd really like you to come. And, and I, that, it's not a place I've spent in, any time hardly since I left. And she said, I'd like you to come to my workplace. And I said, okay, all right, let's do it. You know, and then um, I think this was maybe 2008. Or not, yeah, eight or nine. Anyway, and so she, um, and so it was all arranged, and, and so I showed up, and uh, I was staying with her, and then she starts taking me, and I find out where she works, and so she worked in, uh, she works in a facility in Tennessee, and it is a weapons facility. Actually, it makes my heart beat to <laughs> talk about this. It is, it is actually the largest weapons facility in the world. And so, uh, and I knew of it, you know, I said, oh, and, really, and so I actually, we had, I had to go through a fair amount just to actually get into the administrative building outside the place. I really didn't actually go in, um, but, but there's uh, 5,000 people working there. And so this, I, and it was the very first health oriented, uh, event that they'd had for the employees and so we had a room and uh, was there, there was people out the doors it was more than 50 people came so there was interest and this is in east tennessee so it's not something that people are <laughs> it's something that people are really accustomed to and 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 so i started out with having everybody close their eyes well we lost about it was three or four people that got up and left right at that point because some of the religions there they don't do that so you know any kind of meditation or anything like that uh and so then i, I remember feeling inside it's like Ooh, i really have to make a shift here uh, but i did um and i briefly mentioned the word ayurveda i didn't say it again and i just talked about uh, really just talked about cause and effect i talked about action and result and, and just uh, attempting to get people to connect what they were doing in their lives and how that was and how that was affecting them. And there was a really funny thing that happened. There was a, a fellow there uh, who had a very Southern accent and, and he raised his hand and he said, he said, I'm sorry, I can do it. He says, you mean if my wife is angry at me that 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 food's not going to be very good for me? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that was a great accent too. <laughs> That's what that means. And he came up afterwards and told me, he says, I get indigestion all the time from her cooking. <laughs> so you know, just making those kinds of points with people, it's just it's 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 that to me is one of the most fulfilling things, you know, because they can discover something about themselves that, oh, that it does make a difference in my attitude and that so 
um, yeah, that, that's one of my favorites, actually. <laughs> I love that. And it's just so sweet to think about, you know, that the impact that conversation might have had and the conversations that happened after that. And even though you might be like, oh, wow, I wonder if they even walked away with anything or if this was, you know, too out of the box for them. But like, him even saying that showing how many connections were made and just those little those little shifts can bring about so much transformation so i love that story thank you for sharing it something i was so fascinated by when i was looking at your offerings is that you do intuitive energy readings and i was reading a little bit about your clairvoyant gifts and although i from my own experience i could see how that's all tied to ayurveda but what has been your journey with stepping into your clairvoyant gifts uh, you know, it was something that that uh, was introduced to me at the time uh, that I came to yoga, mm -hmm. and uh, and it was introduced by some folks that uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was introduced to I was introduced to this um, to 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 learn about myself as an energetic being, and to to understand that 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 that's what mm, that's what spirituality meant was that I wasn't something separate from my life, but that it was something that was part of life. Uh, and and so I learned how to do I learned how to do readings and I learned how to do healings, uh, and then I could see in my life you know where I had done those kinds of things. But the way that we approach it um, is is really it's just a matter of uh, showing people things where there's blockage of energy or where there's um, uh, they've taken on some foreign energy something that's not theirs. And that when that that when that happens, that we have an opportunity to to clear some some scara with that kind of a thing. So uh, and and so when I teach people to do this, it's uh, it's more about how can I use tools to understand myself energetically, yeah, and and then how can I use that uh, that those tools uh, to help uh, remove some scara or to to heal the samskara, I think is a better way to say that, uh, to be able to take the charge off of things from the past so that rather than staying in a victim role with the past, that I can really step into, you know, what's, how is this going to give, uh, teach me what I need to go forward? How am I going to learn something about myself in this process? Uh, and that's, you know, that comes in lots of shades and, and that over time, but it's, it's, mm, you know what we find is that is that it's really just about letting go. It's it's about letting go of who we think we are yeah, to become what we're meant to be, and that's uh, uh, and so we use the the, the intuitive uh, the, the intuitive energy practice and the healings are really just for that purpose, so that we can uh, so that people can uh, see themselves in new ways along their path. Yeah, I find that so important, that letting go piece, because that's how we yeah. are able to evolve. And that's what causes the suffering is when we hold on to the resistance. So such a profound offering. And because I love talking about energy, energetic practices, I'm so curious how your clairvoyant gifts show up for you. Do you see that blockage of an energy? Is it more of a feeling that comes through you? Um, no, oh, both, both. Yeah, sometimes it's a feeling, but uh, most, most of the time I can, I see it now, but that's, you know, after many years of practice, and some people that comes a little easier than others, but, uh, but anybody can do it. It's, it's, it's in, but the, the seeing, I think that the seeing is really just to convince us that, oh, yes, it's there, right, because we're so tuned to the physical, uh, and, and that, it's really what I'm doing with my energy that makes all the difference in what happens to my body and what happens in what happens to my experience in life. And, uh, you know, people, it's very popular to say today, you know, that we create our reality, but this is it. You know, we, we whatever I'm doing with my energy, whether I call it intention or 
or uh, my attitude, all of these things is what are what make the difference in how I experience life. So, and that and that's the thing that really that really mm, I really like to a, a point I really like to make with people, which is, hey, this is the part that we do have control over. It's all that other stuff out there that we keep trying to control that we don't have control over, and so that's what it makes life get a whole lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And you have so much experience and wisdom with Ayurveda. We'd love to hear about kind of where your relationship is with Ayurveda today, or maybe anything even specific within the science that you've recently felt really drawn to or connected to. Well, the, one of the things that, that occurs these days, you know, sometimes there's things that I've learned about it, but I'm not using them that much. And so they sort of they drift into the background and then I, I hear somebody talking about it. And, that, and that's kind of fun. These days, there's a lot of people uh, getting maybe a little bit too caught up in the, in the nitty gritty and, uh, and the right and wrong of things. Uh, and so um, for me, what that does is it pushes me even more into seeing many sides of things. You know, talk, talking about, uh, you know, how somebody was asking about Rasa, Virya, and Vipak or uh, are, are the, the taste and the heating and cooling of something and that, and how our body processes it in the later stages of digestion elimination. You know, there's a certain amount of that that's subjective, you know, that, that, that nature has subjectivity in it. It's how we experience it. It's whatever that, that context is. And I, I think that that just recognizing that and always kind of coming back to that allows us to uh, to be more accepting uh, and also to see the solutions to things more easily. Uh, the more I can be uh, recognizing, you know, that, okay, yeah, all right, well, there is that other point of view. There's this point of view and there's that one. And then what do I need to find for this person in this moment in, in the middle, wherever it is? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, you can go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say that's something that we find so profound when we're working with clients because, you know, I say this probably every podcast now because it comes up, but this knowledge is meant to be dynamic by nature. So truly understanding just the fundamentals of it and realizing how we can dance with it and especially make it unique and personalized for each person is what we're so passionate about and seeing how can we have that client trust their body in the way that their body is speaking to them and validating that through the, the science of Ayurveda is, is truly how we connect with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And these days really understanding in that, that, you know, that the mind is, is, is so much, it's, it's so much a part of it and yet it's not <laughs> at the same time. Uh, and so yeah, that I, I look at Ayurveda and, and yoga as being the opportunity for someone to recognize, you know, themselves so well, so much beyond, you know, the activity of the mind and so forth, and even the action, you know, whatever, however the body is responding, but that, uh, that we have such a tremendous power in, in our, in our letting go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And speaking of letting go, um, I think one thing that's interesting is I think there's a lot of lots of energy in the world, a lot of, you know, especially with things that are going on right now, a lot of thoughts, a lot of worrying, a lot of thinking. And I'm curious from your perspective also, although you look like you're in the pitta stage of life, you know, now being in more of that vata stage of life, like what things you can offer for just really seeing from the bigger perspective and you know, finding that sense of calm and peace and surety within yourself. Um, how, how have you been able to do that, especially in, you know, the last few years using all of your life wisdom? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The last, the, the last couple of years have definitely given me some great opportunities, great opportunities to let go. You know, a lot of the things that, that were so important to me, you know, on the one hand I could say, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's the stuff, you know, it's okay. But, uh, you know, then you really start to see what's important when it's all gone or, you know, when it's, when, when you don't have it, it's not there. And, uh, um, 
but your the first part of your question, I'm sorry, I I I blanked it there for a moment. Yeah. It was more just, you know, how to nourish yourself when you're in more of that like vata stage of life. And uh, I think, yeah, people experiencing some of those earlier now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, what I've seen in my practice is huge in terms of what's happening to people. People are aging very, very quickly. And it really is just because of the excess vata. Uh, so, you know, I see that it, un helping people understand that what they're doing is causing this is really is really it. And uh, I, I find myself talking a lot more now about, uh, you know, to, to 30 to 45 year olds saying, hey, you know, you're, <laughs> what you're doing right now is what's gonna make, take a look at your parents. And if you like what, what they're doing, you know, then and what they've got now, then keep doing it. But otherwise you need to change. And uh, I think that change is, is something that we really need to get comfortable with. You know, that I was looking at something the other day, I was reminded that, you know, the body, the word Sanskrit is Sharira, yeah? And that when you translate it, it means something that's in a continuous state of change. Mm. Mm. And we don't think about it that way. Yeah? Yeah. We, want, we want a little narrow view of life to keep it the same. But, you know, the, the, the more I have surrendered to whatever is happening to it, the better it is getting. And I say is getting still, you know, there's things, there's things that are not, you know, I can't, I can't pick up my body weight anymore. And I used to be able to do that. Uh, I, I could probably force it and then it would hurt me, you know, <laughs> but that's really the big thing too, isn't it? It's the practice of ahimsa, the practice that, that I'm not willing to be unconscious and damage my body or consciously damage my body. It be uh, to to satisfy something in my ego, uh, you know. It's it's yeah. I mean, we've probably all done it, and we've been trained to use our intellect in that way. And if this is something that I look at, a lot of our education is untraining. Yes. Uh, so yeah. you know, there's when I look at our training, our counselors in that that and and teachers, they you know, there's, there's a certain amount, okay, you've got to memorize a few things and that, but it's really about understanding the dynamics and letting yourself be in it. So that's, uh, I, I think the biggest thing that I find myself saying to people is, is, uh, is more is not better. More is not better. That's it. You know, that's not the solution. Uh, and that really getting to know, getting to know our friend Vata Dosha, but getting to know the five elements in us and that, it makes all the difference uh, because um, there was a lot of suffering that went on in my life early on because of, because of the excess vata and not understanding that. So, uh, and, and the other thing too is that, you know, people, people in their 50s and 60s and 70s, you know, that there's still healing to take place. It can get more comfortable. It doesn't only have to go downhill. It can just go down, you know, it's going to go down eventually, but it's going to be very gradual. Yeah, I have 70 year olds that have made tremendous changes and wow, I'm always amazed at, at the body's ability to heal. Yeah, and and it's, it's, it's just, you know, if we just really allow ourselves to be in that notion that, you know, that the, the body's continually create, recreating itself, right? You know, the cells are sloughing off. We're making more cells. We, we, we feed ourselves. The, again, the, dhatus, the, the tissues develop. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if, you know, sometimes I, I talk to people frequently, especially women, you know, that they're, they're 50, you know, or 52, and they, they're, they're thinking it's only going to be like this. Well, if you're thinking that way, it's only going to be like that. And so it's really back to that thing of we need to be really willing to allow change and trust life you know to trust the process of life and that comes with our spiritual whatever one may call their spiritual connection regardless of what it is it's it, it's that to allow that trust to to develop and expand and express in our lives then we start to see that's when life really does uh, evolve and expand that's so empowering yeah and with the surging of some of these things and also 
other things that are popular, like the biohacking and longevity, do you see the future of Ayurveda being a part of that and then, you know, being a part of these greater conversations or what do you see as the future of Ayurveda? Mm. <laughs> you know, uh, I think that I, I guess I just see it as an evolution. You know, when we talk about biohacking or, or things of that nature, <laughs> that's a new term for me, but I get it. I, <clears throat> uh, well, you know, I, you know, many things are possible. Uh, I just, uh, I, 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 and I think having those discussions, I think are really important because again, it's, uh, you know, one side of something helps us see the other side of it. And then maybe we can find, you know, the very best solution. Uh, but the more we can, we have a sense of ourself as the five elements, you know, in whatever way is possible, I think then that's going to lead us to where, where we need to be, uh, you know, because if you think about all that, that's just like, oh, okay, so I can conduct my life, but what's it really about? Well, it's really just about love, right? It's about how, you know, I can experience that sense of satisfaction or that sense of love when, when, when a client, you know, has, has an aha moment, you know, it's like, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so those, that, that's really what it's about, right? You know, it, it's, it's about, you know, birthing a baby, an incredibly difficult thing in many ways, and then having this incredible experience of sattva, of, uh, of that, that sense of balance and sweetness and love that we are. It always comes back to that. So we have to keep that in mind uh, you know, all the time. Uh, that that it's life is really just the moments that we have together yeah. and we have those moments alone too but definitely but it takes both yeah. yeah i find that there's so much richness in the elements it's the simplest concept and so there's so much depth and dimensionality to them that that is yeah it's just always the fulcrum of the work that we do as ayurveda lovers yeah that, and I just have to say, an Agni. <laughs> yes, you mustn't forget Agni. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, but, uh, you know, the, 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 the light of our life, right? So, you know, we have a cat here that uh, was a wild cat who came. And, uh, you know, we just, we had a really nice connection. So we made a relationship and now he's here. And so we named him Soria. And uh, because he's great big eyes, you know. But he's a cat that, that uh, he's not what we know as a typical cat. He's some other variety, but, uh, but he's, he was damaged. He had clearly been burned, it looks like. And so he has a, a lot of scarring all over his backside and that. And just to, just to experience the process of him coming to trust us. And now, and now he lays around. <laughs> Like I've never seen a cat before. He lays around on his back with his belly up in the air and his arms spread out. I mean, it's a just, dog. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, anyway, you know that that. Uh, but but Soya reminds us, you know, of the simplicity of life. You know, because pretty much he lays around now and then he plays, and that's it. <laughs> so we take good lesson from him. Yeah, such pure reflections of nature. Yeah. 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 yeah, and then I have a, a wasp coming in to visit me right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for this incredible conversation. It was such an honor to have you on and to hear your story. And just, I think it's so empowering for people to, you know, recognize that their purpose isn't everything and just who they're being. And you're such an embodiment of that. So we thank you so much. And we love what, whatever you're working on or whatever you're creating because I know you've written several books you have two podcasts of your own you're always up to so many things so if there's anything coming up that you're super excited about we'd love for you to share that with our audience oh <laughs> we, we're just uh we, we just um uh... We just opened up our, our everyday sadhana, which is, is where we're bringing Ayurveda and yoga together. And it's just an opera, it's, it's a kind of a membership type thing where we're really guiding people to have, to have, have home practice, you know, to expand their dinacharya and that. And, and so that, that's what's been going on most recently. And we're always talking about Agni. So 
yeah, those are our <laughs> those are our big things these days and and also i there's another there's another uh recipe book uh, coming also yeah. oh that's exciting <laughs> beautiful we love it well thank you again so much for coming on and everyone listening we will see you next week